Hey guys, in this video here I am going to teach you everything you should know about Medieval Dynasty. The current version is 1.1, so you know you're getting something current and up to date or not. Now, let's start with some actual real tips that people who actually played the game and succeeded at it have to give you. Instead of actually having watching some guy talk about building fires and stuff like that. Wow, Jesus. That's why I'm making this video, because I have no respect for these people. I'm going to make my own. Okay, the first thing you want to know is when you start the game, there are RNG loot spawning locations throughout the map. So you're going to get to know your map. When you start the game, over here basically, there are going to be random locations throughout your map that are going to have loot treasures in them. These locations are set in stone. The loot is set in stone, except for the random like numbers of coins in a chest type thing. But all these things are... are recorded so you can go and look on a website and see what is what and where this stuff is so i recommend you do that and get to know your map right away and find these things on the way to your town like i have a video where i make a trip from here and grab all the loot and come around here and grab all the loot and come to here and then do your next steps for your for your for your thing and for the short form is you loot all your stuff get your carry weight up and then go to your town and build your town that type of thing so after you know your map know your map and you know where these spawners might be located the locations are are set in stone but what if they're there or not is not these things are random so i've already said that but the part is they will respawn and despawn on a daily basis they will last about two or three seasons give or take and then new ones will pop up in locations where they weren't before or in the same location it you, you never know where they're going to be. Just remember where they are and keep checking if you want to check for a random loot. You never know what you're going to find. You can find good bows and good weapons and things like that. Now, the next thing you should know on this game, the season changes. When the seasons change, you get transported to your home house. That is the house that you are assigned to. And also on the season change, your health and your um, your health and your food and your water return to maximum. So don't worry about being close to being starving or you know dying of thirst at the end of the last day of the season. You have that ready to go. And for the next tip for a season change, you should know when you get transported, you can use that as a fast travel. There's no other fast travel in this game, but since you, I built my town over here and you need to go, you need to do your quests over here at the start of the game. There's tons of quests. You want to get them done so you can increase your do whatever. I recommend you build a house like on your first day. You build a house as close as you can to this town. So every season change, you will be transported here. And then when the new, new quests pop up for your main storyline quest, they all come from here. So you'll be right here at the start and then you'll be right there and then of course I recommend building a storage facility nearby later on when you want to sell goods because when you get transported here you can come right here and then get your goods and walk into town and sell them and go back and forth making your trips selling all your goods that you want to sell to the town merchants here the next thing I recommend is later on in the game when you actually unlock your horses you're gonna to want to build close to this town here this town here is where you buy your horses. You're going to want to build a house here and change your house to that one over there because by then you should have a wife and your wife can pay the taxes and you don't have to go back to the town to pay your taxes and things like that. And from here you can take your horse and travel up to there. So when you, this is here where you buy your horses. And also tip I recommend you doing is buy horses, baby horses every season. Build as many stables as you want. Four is what I found would work, work best for how long they take to grow into adults. Let them grow into adults and then sell them. You get lots of profit that way. They're five five k each to buy a baby, and they they're worth ten k as an adult. So you end up selling them for a equal amount when they're adults, and half of that for the kids. But you get your um, but when you get the barter skill, you're making a profit, and I believe the profit is pretty good when once your barter skill is up. And of course, that is a fastest way to level up your diplomacy skill is by selling your horses like that your diplomacy your diplomacy skill will skyrocket when you do things like that so sell, sell horses for a lot okay and one more thing for a season change it is a very important event that happens every time you can care you can put as many things as you want into um your your production um, I, uh, sorry, I'm really bad at ex explaining this easily to you, but when you have your workbench here and you're producing something, 
at the end of the season, when you're in this menu here, in any workbench that you have, when you're in this menu, the time is frozen for you. It's not, time isn't frozen, but the season change is frozen. Now, if this was the end of the season and it was nighttime in, this, in, that, in that arrow up here, where you see this arrow for the season change, if that was right here and it was nighttime, the season would not change as long as you're in this menu. If you have a huge supply of planks, for instance, I could make a huge queue of making wooden wheels, which I have done and made. I had like 2,000 planks and I did that. And you come back after an hour or two, that's how long it takes really to do that. But your tide will not change, your food does not go down, your water does not go down, and you've just built a huge supply of wooden wheels to sell and you have your merchants sell them for later on. And that is how you level up your skills and do stuff in a short amount of time and maximize the use of that season change mechanic. Okay, let's go on to the next thing you're going to want to do is that carry weight. Oh, see that red mark up there? That means my uh, horses don't have any food because I, I know what they do. They don't have. I can go fix that, but I'm not going to right away. Now, the next thing you're going to worry about is your carry weight. Your carry weight is very important down here. You start off with a maximum of 35 carry weight, and that is going to hurt you a lot. And you want to build stuff and get those logs which weigh a lot. So the first thing you're going to do is after you go around the map and finding your loot you're, and you sell it, you're going to have to go and find a tailor and buy your large pouch and your large simple backpack right away. That will put you up to 65. And of course, you're going to want to go into your extraction skills and get to mule right away. Now how these, this tree works, if you don't know, I have a detailed video on how all these, what all these skills do and what you should take. But you need to take one point into Tier 1 and then another point into Tier 2 before you can get into Tier 3 to take skills like this to increase your carry weight. And of course, 15 more is the max, which is, you know, super recommended that you do right away for your carry weight. And when if you're looking for some cheap cash at the start and you're, you're kind of worried about it, you can just sit there and build knives. Knives are the best tools that you can build per carry weight for value. They're worth like 20 each, so you sell them for 10 or whatever. But they weigh a lot less than what the stones and sticks do. They weigh next to nothing, and so you can stack up a lot of them at the start of the game for something else to do. But honestly, with all the uh, abandoned camps and stuff like that that they have, you really don't need to worry about making knives anymore to get some money. Okay, and also if you drop stuff on the ground, it stays forever, and you can hold Alt to go into inspector mode and you can see what you have dropped and you can see everything else as you can see you can see all the traps and you can see everything i've dropped in here stuff stays forever and if you're out of storage room drop stuff on the ground like i did i was out of storage room so i just drop stuff on the ground i have made too i have too much stuff i might not my town produces so much stuff my four storage houses aren't enough to hold it all so let's go on to another another helpful tip let's go on to cabbages they are the super fruit of this game the super food. <laughs> I can't believe I said fruit. But they are the super food. You're going to want to start building your cabbages on the first season if possible, which it is possible to do, and build as many, uh, f build as, mu as much as you can at the start. And of course, at the start, you're going to have to buy fertilizer and buy your cabbage seeds. And I got the videos on that if you want to watch those. But they are the great because they have a value of of seven food. They are the highest fruit um, food value that you have and they're the easiest to do and they work for two seasons. So in two seasons you can grow cabbages. So in, in spring and in summer you can have two harvests of cabbage and you, that will feed you for a very a long time. Also to note when you drop food on the ground it rots a lot faster. So why is that useful? Well that is useful because on your barn, which you might be able to build right away, is you can change your rot into fertilizer. Fertilizer can get expensive, and if you don't have pigs yet, how are you going to get it? You're going to have to go around the towns and buy it. You know, you're going you're to go around all the towns and spend money buying crap and then turning it into fertilizer as the cheapest method. Well, this takes a lot of time and it's a lot of carry weight. And if you don't have your horse yet, you're spending all your time running around back and forth between towns. If you want to build a whole bunch of huge fields at the start, you're going to, you're not going to, it's not going to work. So how you do this is you drop stuff like cabbages and food on the floor. And then the next season change, it will turn into rot. It's a hundred percent rot for one season's change. In your inventory, it is 50%. And then other buildings, like in the chest here, it goes down and of course the food storage, it will last the longest 
for its durability. And durability goes down on, on everything. So, and that affects its value, but for food, it doesn't matter as much for your people eating it and stuff like that. It's just for selling. But so you know, why cabbage is so good for this, it is the only food that drops down and turns into four rot per cabbage. Now this is, this is a, uh, something to, to note because the other ones don't. Meat will drop and turn into three rot, but you have to go hunting and do a lot of work. Cabbages are really easy to, to uh, harvest and stuff like that, and you get their seeds, and you drop your thousand cabbage on the ground, it turns into 4,000 rot, which you then turn into 400 fertilizer, and that's enough for me to plant four fields, and you could do that twice a year, and that's enough for eight fields of fertilizer for planting. And this is how you get fertilizer right away. Of course this won't work in the second season. For that I recommend you just uh, you can go and you can pick berries. You can pick unripe berries and they will drop it as one per one type thing. So you pick a thousand berries which is pretty easy to do in, a, in like you know a couple minutes in the game or whatever. Like five minutes or so, ten minutes might take you to pick a thousand berries. You can just drop them wherever you want and then the next season they'll be a rot and then you're good to go with some making some fertilizer. And of course making the fertilizer gives you experience in your farming and making these huge farms gets your experience in your farming fast to get your horses faster that's why farming is a very good tip to do at the start of the game is mass produce your own farming stuff right away now the next thing you know you might want to get your wife right away you get to flirt with them every season so hire your wife as a worker as one of your first workers for your village and put them in a centralized location where you know you're going to be i put mine more right here this is everywhere i do everything i do is right in one centralized location so that's the other tip i should have mentioned earlier is to build every all your buildings in a centralized location for your production your storage and your production buildings so you can easily remove your resources back and forth to produce stuff and then store stuff and I put her in the house right here so every morning I can sleep in the house when she's not my wife and then you wake up she's right here you talk to her and you flirt with her and you get her flirting up to like a hundred or close to it and ask her to marry you and then you're married and you're good to go it's a lot simpler to do that if you know where her house is and it's right beside your house or your main area the other thing to note on that is your kids your kids and all the other kids for the villagers will have their stats be equal to um, your stats. Not equal to, sorry. They will be the average of your stats and the um, the, the wife stats and uh, the man stats. I should be more specific about that. So um, if I put these two people in the same house, they would get married and eventually have the kids. And their skill would be level 9 for the kid. So their kid would have the production value of level 9 when he was born. And when he gets old enough to work, he will do that. I do not recommend putting your people together until you want them to actually have kids. And leave them all in their houses as one each. Put the one person in one house so they do not marry and have kids. Because the wife will be out of work for two years. And that really wrecks your system up. When you have a limited number of buildings and things like that. And it's up to you. You can do whatever you want. Now, um, leveling up your skills. Traps are the best way to get your hunting experience up and getting extra meat for yourself and for your villagers at the start. Trap Master increases your traps up to six total. You can have each, and these traps will keep popping up and having free loot for you. And you get the same amount of experience from a trap as you do for hunting. So go with traps. Always go with traps. Get your hunting up that way. Now, for their jobs, you want your, your workers to be skilled workers and do more production for what they're doing. Not all jobs are created equal for each profession. So you should know that right now. And now how this works in this game is the value of the job. Each job does a different thing. For example, we'll go into the production for the kitchen. Now, these guys are producing vegetable soup and flatbread. These have their own set values. And at the start of the game, I recommend cooking just cooked meat and pottage. Pottage. How do you say that? Pottage. Well, that's whatever whatever that uh, thing is right here. And that uses the cabbages and the meat. That's the cheapest thing you can build to start selling and making right away with your food. But this stuff, creating this stuff is slow. 
And even though his value is high, like it, this is worth 100, vegetable soup is worth 100, so this guy's going pretty good, but he did not level up fast and get up to those levels 10 and 6 by working in the kitchen. He did not level up that way. What you do is you find the highest value job, which is uh, I found to be the sewing huts. That is why I have three of them. That is why I have tons of flax. Flax is your cash crop after you do cabbages. Make sure you're getting your flax, other fields uh, farmed with flax right away. And just so you know, I got four of them at 100 each to feed these three sewing huts with stuff like linen thread. Linen thread is high, high in value because flax is high in value. And these guys get a ton of experience real fast. And this guy's already up to level nine again. And after they get up to level nine, I take them off this job and then I move them up to another job like the smithy. Smithy is a nice average job progression, but you put them in the smithy. Like I put this guy in over here and he's level eight. And I put him, he was working over in the sewing hut. But you put him over here and now you have a high production values on your smithy and you're making your other things nice and fast. Versus things like, you know, the workshop, which is another slow job that progression, but you want one because you need to build your buckets and stuff like that. And you don't want to keep doing this yourself and you need your bowls and stuff like that. Whatever you're going to build. But so, all these jobs have a different value. You just look at the value on the crops and you can find it out, figure it out for yourself. And that's why like, you know, things for, for farming job, you want to level up your farmers. The pig sty is the best place to do it. Keep all five pigs and you're producing a lot of manure. Manure is cheap, but look how much he's producing. And this is the fastest I found for leveling up your farmers. You stick them in the pig sty with five pigs. They level up super fast. They get up to eight or nine. You change them into other jobs that you want them to have good in like the fold the fold is a good place to level up too but at the start it's not super fast because you only have like a couple sheep and you want to have this thing maxed out once you have maximum number of sheep though you are producing a lot of wool which is a lot worth a lot and so this guy is leveling up super fast once your fold is completely full of people and then once they are leveled up you can move them into farming and when they're in the farming, you can stick them into a barn worker and on working on the fields and stuff like that. And they will level. And since they are leveled up faster, they are working harder for you and doing more for you. And of course, animal feed is your highest one here, and things like flour are worth a lot too. So they, these guys are get, barn workers go up level fast too, as long as you have them doing things like animal feed, uh, fertilizer. They don't level up very fast in because it's not as high as a value of a thing. This is worth forty, and this is worth seven, I believe or seven and a half or something like that to, for fertilizer. So this is worth a lot more and they get a lot, so they'll get a lot more experience out of it. So remember that for all types of jobs are doing that. And unfortunately you can figure the rest of them out for yourself for these things like planks are worth most the most for um, wood cut, woodshed. But I don't recommend you doing that because the other tip I'm gonna say right now is Save your logs, build a whole bunch of logs, and at the end of the season, turn them into planks yourself. You get experience for that, for your technology, and you get experience in your extraction skills. Your extraction is kind of hard level unless you're gonna be cutting down trees yourself a lot, which takes a lot of time. So you can just have your people make a lot of wood and turn it into planks yourself. And then each plank you make, it, you get experience for it yourself. So I recommend you do that. Now that should be that should cover everything about the jobs and their value and the value is more is really more important I should stress that again the value of what they're doing gives you more experience same for selling stuff if you sell something that's worth 10 gold and you sell 10 of them or you sell something worth 100 you get more experience off selling the one item worth 100 than you do selling the 10 things that are worth 10 each that is how the experience works too so the higher the value of the job that they're doing and the more that they're doing it for total, like for, for the pigs, for example, is the more experience that they're going to get at their jobs and they're going to level up faster. So that is good. And also remember, your guys need tools. Make sure you put your tools inside your storage area and your people will use the tools up by themselves. And also to note, they will go with the lowest conditioned item that they have. So just so you know, if everything happened to your, like your, if you had an awesome, um, let's say an iron... What's, what's something you want to, something you might buy at the start is an iron pick to save yourself a time for mining. If you have an iron pick in here, but it's percent value went down to something like 4% and you had your storage area full of stone, stone, um, stone picks, your people will pick that your iron pick on you and use it up on you because its condition is lower than that of a full stone pick. So that's how they use it, but they will use the lowest value item that you have in there and 
the condition of it matters when they pick it. So they won't just always pick the stone thing. They will pick by condition. So remember that. Now, the next thing you should know. Um, outside hunting and stuff like that. Hunting is, is really easy, right? The wolves stand there and you can shoot them. The boars will stand there for a second and you can shoot them. But bears and the, and the uh, buffalo guys, they don't. And they are big and they can kill you. I've, got, I've been killed by a bear in one hit one time. Very unlucky. You don't want that to happen to you. Carry logs with you. This is a nice tip. Carry logs with you enough to build a woodshed. And then what you do is when you're coming close to them, is you take your woodshed and you drop it down in the middle of wherever you are. You drop your woodshed down, you stand in the middle of the, of the uh, foundation for it, and they will not pathfind to you very well. Now it's nighttime and you can't see nothing, but that is what happens. I will go to the daytime as I talk. But so that is a good tip for you to do is drop a foundation of any building nearby and you're, uh, you can be safe from their attacks. It's not perfect. Watch my videos. You can see it's not perfect if you're sloppy about it and uh, you're going to kill like three of the buffalo guys at once with spears. You know, they can like, you know, come and get you. They have a huge attack range, but you can do it safely if you use a tip like that. The other thing you should know is mount transferring. Once you get your horse and you summon it, your horse can, you can transfer your goods to your horse. Obviously you know this, but the distance is 15 meters. So you can go up to 15 meters away and transfer your goods. So if, if I wanted to build a lot of tools, for instance, like you want to build a whole bunch of tools yourself, you don't have the workers yet, you put your horse like somewhere over here, you go to your storage area, you grab as much stuff as you want, and then you transfer it to your horse, to your inventory, to your inventory, and you just like, you know, there's your mount thing right there. You know, transfer it to your mount. And then you move to where you want to go and then grab your, and then transfer that that way. So that is another tip for transferring stuff around to save you a little bit of time. Um, other than that, I think that covers all the uh, basic tips that you should know. The rest is pretty uh, easy to figure out. So good luck in your game. Uh, I'll talk to you later.